Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. President Andrzej Duda has called on the European Union to tighten sanctions against Russia over the detention of opposition leader Alexei Navalny and the action of the law enforcement agencies during the protests on the 23rd of January. In an interview with the Financial Times, he said that the only way to avoid conflict is to make the Russian authorities comply with international law. The European Union is discussing tougher sanctions against Moscow. There is no other peaceful tool for applying pressure to the West state that breaks the rules of international law. The primacy of international law is fundamental here. As long as international law is observed, there is no war. If international law is broken, the effect of this is always conflict. The only way to avoid conflict is to force international law to be observed. The only way to do this without rifles, cannons and bombs is via sanctions. So we are ready to help build consensus on this issue. The Polish Minister of Foreign Affairs, Professor Zbigniew Rau, has demanded that the European Union High Representative for Foreign Affairs, Josep Borrell, should reconsider his upcom vi upcoming visit to Moscow. The European Union Summit of Foreign Affairs Ministers discussed the case of the jailing of Russia's Alexei Navalny, but failed to reach any decision. The German Foreign Minister, Heiko Maas, has called for the immediate release of peaceful protesters saying that the Russian constitution gives everybody in Russia the right to express their opinion and to participate in demonstrations. Lithuanian Foreign Minister Gabrielus Landsbergis said that the 27-member bloc needs to send a very clear and decisive message that this is not acceptable. The foreign ministers of former Soviet republics of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania are among those demanding sanctions against Russian officials responsible for the arrests. Professor Zbigniew Rau called Joseph Borrell to visit Kiev before flying to Moscow and urged the European Commission to prepare a plan of economic aid to democratic Belarus after phasing out Alexander Lukashenko's dictatorship. Italy will sue the Pfizer pharmaceutical company for failing to deliver the agreed quantity of COVID-19 vaccine. The producer argues that the manufacturing lines need improvement, while all Europe is experiencing shortages as a result. Italy has demanded the delivery of the agreed number of doses to maintain its vaccination programme. As a result of shortages, Poland has already cut the number of vaccinations across the country. According to government officials, Poland is able to vaccinate up to 4 million people a month, yet the drugs delivered fall short of what the producers committed to in the autumn. Worse, the shipment of 42,000 doses from United States company Moderna has been delayed for several days. We are constantly suffering from a shortage of vaccines. It is another producer who announces that the delivery date has been postponed. The opposition has accused the government of chaos over the vaccines, so the government has responded by inviting it to a meeting tomorrow. Let's talk about facts. Let's talk about issues. But let's not whip the cream over it. Let's not scare the people. By the end of March, over 3 million Poles will have received the COVID-19 vaccine. We are waiting with great hope for new delivery plans from producers, which, according to their declarations, will be much more timely in the second quarter. At the moment, there are no more doses available, so we are appealing to seniors to stay at home and not to go to the clinic. Instead, use the hotline, send a text message or register online. Today, there are no queues in front of clinics. These lines, if any, are directly for vaccinations, not for registration. Meanwhile, experts advise, before we are vaccinated, let's take care of ourselves, because the virus does not let go. First of all, we need to get a good night's sleep, because the immune system regenerates during sleep. That is, half an hour more sleep every day. The latest statistics show that there are definitely fewer cases. We have almost five times fewer than in November. However, we must be vigilant. One should not be so reassured even if you took the first dose and therefore consider yourself protected to some extent. No, no. Immunity starts in the second week after the second vaccination. So avoid crowds and watch your health for at least a month. Then, even when an infection occurs, we increase the chances of such an asymptomatic transition and no severe complications, where the virus will multiply faster than our body removes it. Will there be changes to the vaccination schedule? The government will discuss with the opposition tomorrow morning what the national immunization program should look like in order to return to normal as soon as possible. The Ministry of Health has announced that the number of those infected with the virus has returned to the level seen at the beginning of October last year. The Ministry reported 2,419 new infections and 38 deaths. 
10 of them were caused by COVID, and 28 by COVID coexistence with other conditions. The largest number of new infections occurred in the following voivodeships, Małopolskia, Podlaskia and Lubelskia. About 20,000 tests for the presence of COVID-19 were performed during the day. And now an update on the story of the Polish national in the University Hospital in Plymouth, UK. For two days now, he has had the status of a Polish diplomat, but the British hospital has denied the Polish consul access to him. Following a court order, Mr. Sławomir is still being denied food and water. At the same time, Polish diplomatic personnel are struggling to get him out of the United Kingdom. Every hour now counts. This is the top story in Polish media, and it was broken by Telewizja Republika. The relatives of this gentleman came to us and, as I said, we reported what was happening from the very beginning. We showed the movie as it is. We talked to the family and we will definitely be covering this matter to the very end. The issue of Mr. Sławomir's tragic experience captured the attention of the public in Poland and of Poles living in the United Kingdom. Most are in solidarity with the family and look forward to the resolution of this issue as soon as possible. Grot is the name of a modular rifle used by the Polish army. The quality of this weapon has been questioned today by the Onnit.pl, the most popular internet portal in Poland. Its owner is the German-Swiss concern Ringer Axel Springer. The rifle's producer refutes the allegations and journalists see a fight between German media supporting a German manufacturer against its Polish competitor in arms exports. Onnit has published three texts in which it criticizes the quality of the Polish rifle by comparing it with the product of the German concern Heckler & Koch. According to the authors, the Polish rifle is susceptible to rust, its parts break down and the whole thing endangers the safety of soldiers. The manufacturers of the rifle, Fabrika Broniwa Radiomiu, consider these allegations groundless and point out that the weapon passes all the tests required by the Polish army and that the publications are based on anonymous opinions, which undermine their credibility. Grot rifles are constantly being improved, and the Polish army already has 43,000 pieces of this weapon. Why did the Swiss-German-owned portal devote so much space to the rifle story? The answer may be the Ukrainian army, which needs modern small arms. The competitor of the Polish Grot is the German Heckel & Koch. The authors of the article did not find any weakness in this equipment. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.